It's not been too long since we brought you our comparison of the new Honda Civic and the Skoda Octavia. But in the month since, Hyundai has brought out the updated Elantra. Now it's available solely in BS6 petrol form. What we are going to find out today is what the Elantra is good at, where does it fit in and could it be the executive sedan to buy? There's very little difference between the three cars in size, but you sure won't confuse one for the other in the way they look. The updated Elantra retains the original swoopy shape, but the detailing is now all about sharp cuts and angular forms. Triangular headlights, a hexagonal grille and the sunken fog lights, triangular again, make the facelifted Elantra look like a whole different car. The tail is redone too, the new tail lamps get LED detailing, the boot lid is different, while the number plate has been repositioned to the bumper. The Elantra sure has its interesting details, but more imaginatively styled and larger 17-inch rims would be part of our wish list. No such complaints about the Civic, it's easily the one that turns the most heads. While its low bonnet, delicate surfacing and arced roof are talking points in their own right, it's the fastback-like tail that elevates the design to another plane. Other things like the detailing on the lights and wheels only further the Civic's exotic appeal. The Škoda Octavia clearly looks like the European car of the trio. It lacks the flamboyance of its rivals, but there will be many who will take to its clean-cut, understated form. Styling is neat, the subtle detailing is elegant, and even six years on, the shape looks classy. Nicer wheels would do the trick on the Octavia too, don't you think? Shifting focus to the interiors, first up, the Elantra. The first thing of note about the updated Elantra's cabin is the switch to a dual-tone theme. The earlier car had an all-black interior, but this one uh, feels a bit more European in look. Uh, the dashboard itself has a very European look to it. Uh, it's not changed in design, but Hyundai has added certain metallic elements over here on the air vents and also this nice strip to make it feel a bit more premium. You'll also find four carbon fiber finish on the dash top and over the instruments binnacle. But if there's one thing Hyundai is particularly proud of, it's the connected tech on the Elantra. The updated Elantra gets a larger 8-inch touchscreen that comes with Hyundai's Blue Link eSIM based connectivity tech. It's a great feature to have if you want to keep an eye on your car's whereabouts and chauffeur's driving behavior. But we suspect the option to remotely start and pre-cool the car is what buyers will boast about most. Of the other things, as before, the ventilated front seats have your back on warm days. The Civic's cabin is distinct in its own way. The Civic's cabin sits the lowest of the three cars, so it's a considerable drop down onto the front seats. But once you're inside, what you'll find is the sportiest of the three cabins. I really like the layered effect to the dashboard. But what really distinguishes the Civic's cabin is how the dash just envelops around the driver, helped largely by this high set center console. The driving position is also just spot on. The position of the steering wheel, the pedals, the gear shifter, it just makes you feel like you're in a sporty car and it'll make you feel like a boy racer even if you aren't one. The three-part dials are also special, but the 7-inch touchscreen is a bit of a miss as its graphics appear a bit last-gen. What is a surprisingly useful inclusion is the lane watch system that relays feed from a mirror-mounted camera of far-side blind spots. The Octavia's cabin might be the most sedate in look, but there's much to like about it. The Octavia's dashboard is clean-cut and well thought out, but you could also think that it looks a bit too business-like. Still, if you poke around the cabin, you'll find that the Octavia's has the greatest concentration of soft-touch materials. It's also the one with the tightest shut lines and attention to detail is just great. Even the door pockets get felt lining. These are the small things that make a world of a difference. And as much as a fingerprint magnet it is, the Octavia's 8-inch touchscreen is also the nicest to use. The Audi-like virtual cockpit digital instruments on top-spec L and K cars look rich too. Talking features, the pricey fully loaded Octavia LNK is the only one with auto parking and a powered front passenger seat, though lesser versions still get you all the essentials you'll need. What about the rear seats? It's a fairly even battle, but each car has its own highlights and quirks. 
While the Elantra's rear seat and rear seat space remain unchanged from before, you do get a greater sense of space in the back and that's all thanks to the use of these lighter materials. Remember, the earlier Elantra had an all-black cabin. Still, legroom is quite good by class standards, but headroom is in short supply. Where the Elantra does get a small lead above its rivals is in middle passenger comfort. It's got the flattest floor and it's also the only one with an adjustable center headrest. The Civic's low slung shape comes with its drawbacks. Those of you looking to buy an executive sedan primarily to spend time in the back should know that the Civic's rear seat is positioned really low. So getting in and out of the car can be an exercise. But once you're in the back, you will like the amount of space on offer. In fact, legroom matches that of the Octavia's. I also really like the backrest. It's very well cushioned and really supportive. If only this center armrest wasn't positioned uncomfortably low. You sit higher up in an Octavia. There's quite a lot to like about the Octavia's rear seat. As you can tell, there's lots of knee room and there's a lot of foot room as well. So you can tuck your feet in under the front seat. I also like that the windows are large and it's also got the most headroom of this trio of cars. But there are certain things that do work against the Octavia's back seat as well. For one, the rear seat is slightly too upright and middle passengers will have to contend with this high central hump. Over to the way they drive. Upgrading a BS4 petrol engine to BS6 spec includes the fitment of exhaust after treatment hardware and a process of recalibration that typically results in a drop in power and economy. So it's interesting to note that the Elantra's now BS6 compliant 2.0-litre petrol engine makes the same 152 horsepower and 192 Newton meters as before. Fuel economy for this 6-speed torque converter automatic transmission equipped version is at an identical 14.6 kpl2. But does it drive any different? The short answer is yes. Now, in terms of raw numbers, I can tell you that the Elantra is actually 0.4 of a second slower to 100 kph and even through the gears in kickdown acceleration, say from 20 to 80 or 40 to 100, this version is actually slower than the old car. But all's not lost because in the bargain, the Elantra's engine has actually become a whole lot quieter. In fact, the improved refinement is one of the highlights of the updated car. The power delivery characteristic has also changed a wee bit so that overly enthusiastic low end has made way for a more progressive power delivery which makes it easier to live with in town and even the gearbox that was ever too ready with a downshift has become a bit smoother, a bit more relaxed. Driving modes including a new smart mode fine-tune the powertrain's character but a sporty car the Elantra is not. The Elantra changes direction with confidence and actually feels a lot stiffer than the Hyundai's we are used to. It's just that it still doesn't quite make the grade as a driver's car and part of the reason is that the steering is just quite numb. The Elantra has an absorbent low speed ride but large potholes tend to thud through the cabin. At high speeds, there's also more vertical movement than you'd like. Civic's driving experience is a mixed bag. The Civic's 1.8-litre engine makes the least amount of power, but when you're driving in town or starting out, you really won't feel the power deficit. Low-speed responses are particularly good, and the engine comes across as if it always has enough power to give. In town, the CVT gearbox also feels rather nice and goes about its business smoothly. It's just that when you up the pace, things start to go down south very rapidly. Mash down on the accelerator pedal and you'll hear the sound of strained resistance. That's when the CVT gearbox's rubber band effect rears its ugly head. You can take matters into your own hands using the paddle shifter that let you shuffle through the seven steps of the transmission. But even so, you'll never be more than a spectator to the engine and gearbox's activities. It's a shame because the Civic actually has the dynamics of a sporty car. The steering is quick, turn-in is sharp and I like how fluidly the Honda changes direction. 
What really helps give that connected feel with the car is the driving position itself. As I had mentioned, just the relation between the steering, the pedals, the gear lever makes such a difference. And also the low center of gravity, it just gives it an agility you just don't get in the other cars. It's also the low slung Civic that feels the best tied down at high speeds. Even low speed ride is impressive despite the suspension setup being on the stiffer side. However, the cabin isn't exactly calm with plenty of road noise seeping in. It's the Octavia that offers the best overall driving experience. The Octavia's 1.8 litre engine makes 180 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. Both figures which are the most in this class. And boost is the secret of the Octavia's energy. This engine uses turbocharging and direct injection and it is one gem of a unit. The engine is nice and friendly at low speeds but at the very first dab of the accelerator pedal you'll get to the best of what the engine has to offer. You get an espresso-like kick at the mid-range and then there's a lusty pull all the way to 6000 rpm. What also complements the engine's performance is the quick-shifting dual-clutch gearbox. It's in tune with your driving style in automatic mode and then you also have the option of a manual mode, shift wire, the gear lever or the paddles and what you love is just how responsive this gearbox is. As for handling, the Octavia does feel like the largest of the three sedans from behind the wheel. While handling is neutral, there is that typical Volkswagen Group inertness to the steering wheel that takes a bit away from the dynamics package. You do feel a bit more of the road surface in an Octavia than you would in, say, a Civic, but it's not enough to warrant complaint. Time for the executive decision. Priced at 20.39 lakh rupees ex showroom Delhi, the range topping Hyundai Elantra petrol automatic is the most affordable car here. But in a segment where budgets tend to be flexible, the slight price advantage isn't a decider. The new look Elantra is pleasant in most respects, but it's not a car that bowls you over for any one thing in particular. The sinuous Civic, on the other hand, has magnetic appeal. You'll want one solely for the way it looks. But spend time in one and you can't help but think how much nicer the Honda would have been with a more eager engine or even just a better gearbox. All said, it's a good executive sedan to buy for 21.24 lakh rupees, but not the best executive sedan to buy. Once again, it's the Škoda Octavia that holds its own. Yes, the fully loaded LNK is pricey at 23.59 lakh rupees, but you can save a packet by opting for the style variant that costs 20.59 lakh rupees. As a product, what has always and continues to work in the Octi's favour is its combination of an exceptional powertrain, a rich and comfortable cabin, and genuine practicality. The thing is, the current gen Octavia is in its run out phase and will bow out before April 1, 2020, when BS6 emission norms kick in. The next gen model comes to India in late 2020. While this could be a deal breaker for many, the right way to see the Octi's impending departure is as an opportunity to push hard for big discounts. Already offered with a six year warranty, an Octavia with a big savings sure sounds like a sweet deal.